Hello YouTube, it's Black Tiger Miner here. Welcome you guys back to the Black Tiger Miner YouTube channel. Today we're discussing Dynex overclocking. I've been working on this for a while and I cannot get these NetVidia overclocks to work. I got the uh, AMD to work easy, right? They work like a charm on Dynex. But these net videos don't really work well. Just trying to figure out if anybody's having this problem. So I did unplug one, and I'm going to show this video I was watching from Red Fox, where he had some pretty good overclocks. So let's run through the video, and then I'll show you what I'm working with. 330 series card, which I have in my test rig here: A2000, 3060, 3060 Ti. 3070, A4000, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080, 12 gigabyte, 3080 Ti, 3090, and finally 3090 Ti. And if you have any of these GPUs and you're looking to mine Dynex, stay tuned because I'm going to get you started with some really good overclocks to be the most efficient, which is my goal right now in mining Dynex. So if you're not familiar with Dynex, you can check them out on DynexCoin.org, learn a little bit more about the project, get involved in the community. And of course, you need some mining software to get started which is gonna be one zero miner, is the only NVIDIA miner as of making this video. Current version is one, two, three. Get it on either Windows or Linux. And in this video, we're gonna be going over Hive OS. If you do not use Hive OS, I highly recommend you do. It is so easy and so approachable. Referral link is in my video description. So let's give you the results right up front in case you wanna just get started. Here you go, here's all the testing that I've done. For all of these GPUs includes the performance, the power, the efficiency, the core locks, the core offsets, and the memory lock or memory offset, which we're going to go over in a little bit for all the GPUs that I have. So hopefully this gets you started. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to go over the all overall approach and give you a little bit of look behind the scenes on how all this works. So you have the information to get the best performance efficiency wise out of your specific GPU, because even a 3070 versus another 3070 might use a different lock core clock, uh, et cetera, to get some different performance. Let's take a look over in my Hive OS here. You can see all those GPUs listed, all performance that they're currently getting. And I'm gonna talk now about the overall approach to this. So the first thing that I do is I lock my fans at 100%. So there's no variations in fan speed that might adjust the wattage as I'm calculation, calculating efficiency. From there, for most GPUs, I will lock the memory at 5,000, uh, which will lock it depending on the, gener the GPU at 5,000 or 5,001. And you can see some of them have a memory offset instead, and we'll go through that in just a little bit. But for most GPUs, I use that approach. And this is the same approach if you've been mining Caspa or Ironfish or... Uh, even Flux and some, several of the others, Radiant, use this same approach. So once I've locked my memory, once I've set my fan speed, then it's time for me to go in and start figuring out what my core clock needs to run at to be the most efficient, the most amount of kilohash for the least amount of power. This is your starting place that I give to you. It is my gift. So start with these core locks, and if your GPU is going to be different, and what you do is you go up and down in increments of 15, plus or minus 15 from this starting, plate, starting place. And you're going to see if it gives you a better efficiency or not. And you can track all of that over in the mining software, which is a fantastic display of data. You can see the efficiency right here, along with the core clocks and memory clocks that are set for each individual GPU. Once you do that, once you've found the most efficient core clock, you have your memory locked and you have your fan speed set at 100%, the next thing you can do is start bringing back the wattage. And that's where we're gonna talk about the flight sheet. In the flight sheet, you're gonna be able to set a core offset. And that core offset, I'd recommend you start around 300 and then just go up increments of 10 from there until you get a crash. And what's happening here is it's reducing the voltage that the GPUs are using and bringing down your wattage. And how you can monitor this as you're doing it is if you go in Hive Shell and type NVIDIA-SMI-Q-D voltage, it will show you the voltage currently for every single GPU in your rig. And you can watch this drop 
as you do the core offset higher. And eventually you're gonna to get to a place where it won't drop any further. And you know that you've hit the limit for that GPU. For me, 310 applies to every card in this rig. Certain cards can run higher to save me an additional watt or two. But for me, I just like finding one that works on every GPU and I will set it there. I'm a little different because I have a really mixed rig right now, but this will apply very well if you have a like 12 card 3070 rig or something like that. You'll find really one that will work on every GPU fantastic. But there may be cards in this rig that I can get up to 360 um, or 380 even. But for me, I'm just going to stick in that 310. But you can go a little bit further if you choose to. One thing you may have noticed here is I have my memory locked at that 5001, and there's a couple asterisks as I'm skipping the memory lock on certain GPUs. That's going to bring me back over to some of the GPUs that I instead have a memory offset, a negative memory offset. And the reason I did this is because in one of the previous 1.0 minor releases, they actually said locking clocks to 5000 or 5001 might not be the best choice for efficiency particularly on high-end GPUs in each generation. So I tested every GPU, and it's true. It did apply to my higher-end GPUs, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 12 gigabyte, and 3080 Ti. Those specific GPUs were more efficient when I did a memory offset. You can see negative 2,000 on some and negative 1,000 on others, though my 3090 and 3090 Ti still liked having the memory locked instead of the offset. And you can see back in the minor what your memory clock is currently running at, whether you have an offset or not, it's provided right here in the mining software. So that is how to get started. That is how to adjust overclocks for your specific GPUs. Let's take a look at some charts here to really just see what the most efficient GPU is, what kind of results we're getting here. So you can see that as far as the most performance is gonna be the 3090, because that 3090 Ti can get really, really efficient. You can get it down and really lower the wattage on the thing. You're gonna sacrifice some hash rate, even though it's a better GPU, but you can get it really far down compared to 3090. There's just something about the architecture on that GPU that allows me to do that. And I've seen that testing multiple algorithms. So 3090 is gonna give you the most hash rate, use absolutely the most power, uh, but for me, I'm absolutely looking at what's the most efficient. So let's take a look at that right here. So to no surprise, you can see the A4000 coming up as the most efficient GPU and then followed closely by 3070 and 3060 Ti. Again, no real surprise there. Those GPUs have been the most efficient for a long time mining pretty much every algorithm. But then the worst one always always, always, always is that 3080, 12 gigabyte. I absolutely despise that card. I think I just might set it on fire because it is so terrible, though I keep it around for testing. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I covered it all. Hoping to miss anything. That is mining Dynex on 30 series GPUs. And I hope this helped you. In so we did do the <clears throat> review he mentioned for the... 30 series GPUs. And if you can see here, I have no problem with the uh, Dynex on um, AMD GPUs, right? They're mining right away with no problem. It's just a problem with the uh, NVIDIA cards and the 30 series and this 470. Although the 470 works fine. It's just the 3 Series I'm having problems with. And surprisingly, this 2070 works pretty well, too. But I just restarted. And I think this 30 Series is bad. But I'll go check to see what that error message is. And I'll provide that error message in the video because the current message is, what is this? Um, core DNA push buffer. And that might just be the bad one, but I'll also put another video, another um, 
screenshot because I'm restarting and I'm going to try it again when I remove this 130 series. So currently the 30 series are as mentioned performing pretty well. So let's see, I think it was this guy. Yeah. So this is the current overclocks. This is the previous overclocks I was running. And then I'll restart and then create another video because this is the new from the video. And here are the old, the previous overclocks that ran fine. Just this 3070 doesn't work well. I might think it just, just one's burnt out or there's a problem here. I'm not sure, but if you know, um, let me know what you think in the comment section and we can add that to this video as well. Then here's the Dynex homepage and this is the Twitter feed, which doesn't have any much useful information in it, but let me restart this guy and see uh, so let's restart this guy and see actually uh, what's going on as well there. But let me know what you think about the video. If you have any comments or any information, just put in the comments below. This is Black Tiger Miner signing out. Uh, happy Thursday, which is Friday Eve. And... Look forward to the Casper video coming up next. All right, guys.